This video demonstrates an integration between SOLIDWORKS 2007 and MathCAD 14. This integration is a free downloadable utility that is not supported by PTC. This is not a PTC product. It's simply an example of how the two products can be integrated using the supported API from SOLIDWORKS and the supported API from MathCAD. There are a number of reasons why this integration could be useful to end users. First and foremost is to use MathCAD as an analysis tool to check and, and, and verify the designs made within SOLIDWORKS. So you could imagine an engineer sending the dimensions from a SOLIDWORKS, uh, a SOLIDWORKS model to MathCAD and MathCAD doing a, 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 a stress analysis or a structural analysis or you know checking the buckling uh, uh, factors for specific pressures, etc. So MathCAD, again, uh, can be used as an analysis engine. You can also imagine that same engineer then using MathCAD's op uh, ability to do optimizations on parameters to actually um, maximize or minimize specific parameters based on different constraints or criteria and send those dimensions back to SOLIDWORKS to update that model. So the integration is a bi-directional integration between the two products and allows dimensions from the SOLIDWORKS model to go into MathCAD as input parameters into their analyses to do that uh, uh, calculations for, for pressure or strain and uh, check uh, uh, requirements for buckling, etc. Then we can also then take those results or maybe optimize some of those dimensions, optimize those input parameters um, using our maximize, minimize functions, etc., and send those results back to SOLIDWORKS to update that CAD geometry. And we're going to look at that in this, uh, in this demonstration. One of the additional benefits of using MathCAD in these different scenarios is then you actually have a document now of your calculations. Right, you have a, a report that can actually be stored and managed along with the SOLIDWORKS CAD model. As previously mentioned, the, the, the integration is actually built using the APIs from both products, the SOLIDWORKS API and the MathCAD API. SOLIDWORKS users are probably familiar with the concept of add-ins. In the uh, SOLIDWORKS copy that I'm running here, you'll see that I have both an ANSYS add-in and now a new MathCAD 14 add-in. Add-ins allow third-party integrators to build additional functionality into the SOLIDWORKS license. So to work with the integration between SOLIDWORKS and MathCAD, we go to the MathCAD add-in and we'll toggle on show the property panel. Right Now the property panel is basically what's going to allow us to manipulate and manage the dimensions that go from SOLIDWORKS over to MathCAD and what parameters they'll actually, what input parameters in the MathCAD worksheet they will drive. And then the bottom half of the property panel allows us to do the round trip, which MathCAD results are going to be sent back to SOLIDWORKS to drive SOLIDWORKS dimensions. So first we're going to load a pre-built MathCAD worksheet. This has calculations that have been designed to support this um, uh, uh, the scenarios that we talked about earlier, where we're going to actually do some, some analysis, some uh, stress and strain analysis on this design. So when I've loaded this MathCAD worksheet, what happens is it actually launches MathCAD in the background. So now MathCAD is up and running. And let's just uh, make this so we can actually see MathCAD. Right. All right, and you'll notice perhaps in this MathCAD worksheet that there are some red parameters. These parameters have been built into this MathCAD worksheet knowing that they're going to support this analysis, but they have not been filled in yet. These are the parameters that are going to be driven by the SOLIDWORKS uh, dimension. So I'm going to actually state that I'm going to take uh, dimension 5, and I'm going to map that then to uh, the W input for MathCAD for the MathCAD calculations. You'll see that these parameters are actually being used downstream in the calculations to calculate the pressure on the joint and calculate the allowable pressure before buckling. Then we go through a safety check to see if it's within the buckling limits. right? And then further on in this worksheet, so again this was a pre-built MathCAD worksheet, we're actually going to do some constraint-based optimizations to see what a new value might be for uh, D sub B, D sub R, and Z. And these are, again, the input parameters that are coming originally from the model. So the di diameter of the base, the diameter of the riser, and the height of the riser. So we're going to map these as well as the, uh, the width here. So we're actually going to then take uh, D1, and we'll map that to uh, D sub B. We're going to take uh, D2 at sketch 1 and map that to D sub R. And then finally, we'll say that uh, D1 at sketch 4 is going to come over to uh, to drive our 
a z-value. Now, these parameters that we're looking at, d5, d1, all these, if you actually go out to your um, uh, design table, you'll actually see that these are actually the parameters that are being used in this model, and they have current values. In this case, you'll see current values such as, uh, you know, 2.7, 3.4, 2.35, all right, in the default uh, uh, view for this design table. So coming back to this model and back to the parameter uh, panel of MathCAD, and let's bring MathCAD back to the front as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now is if you watch these red values, I'm going to hit the Submit button, and it's actually going to do the mapping. It's actually going to transfer XML strings between the two products, and you see the 3.4, 2.7, 3.35, 2.35. I already added now to the MathCAD worksheet. Those parameters are now valid MathCAD parameters. The downstream calculations will now trigger and execute, and we can look at the results of the computations, and we'll see that the uh, allowable pressure um, is within, you know, what this model will, will, will stand up to, will stand up to um, uh, a 24.407 KSI, and that is certainly within our buckling limits, right? So this design actually works for us. Now, what we can also do to continue down, we'll look at some constraint-based optimization. Here, I just put in some, for this demo, I've just put in some, some constraints that uh, the new DB has to be um, uh, uh, has to be less than, you know, the quotient of uh, New Zealand, uh, New DR, etc. So we put in these constraints using the Boolean operators. So here I'm using find to find a solution of what will define those new, uh, those new uh, geometric uh, values, right? And we're going to actually send them back to um, SolidWorks. So in this case, I'm going to say, let's go with uh, New DB, and we're going to map that to uh, D1 at Sketch 1. I'm going to say New DR, height of the riser. I'm going to set that equal to D5, and then finally I'm going to say new Z is equal to, is going to then drive uh, D2 at sketch 1. And now when I update this, I can send this back by simply saying submit. Now we're doing the round trip. We're actually taking values off of this worksheet and sending them back to the SolidWorks model. Okay, and now you can see back in SolidWorks that has actually updated this model, updated this design for us. And uh, for better or for worse, uh, we can see the new geometry that that has created. So using the two products together, right, using with this integration allows me to do a bi-directional communication uh, from SOLIDWORKS to MathCAD where I can do all of my calculations uh, as an analysis tool. It also then allows me to do what-if ana analysis. What if, I, what if I changed, you know, this value? What if I changed that value? What if I changed these constraints? And try these new... Um, uh, try these new values back on the CAD model. Of course, SOLIDWORKS then giving us the visual representation to see if that actually makes any sense. It may meet our design goals, but maybe it's a part that we cannot even manufacture. So the integration between the two products allows us to do the bidirectional communication um, of, of dimensions to drive input parameters to calculations, and results from those calculations or other calculations can be sent back to SOLIDWORKS to update the geometry.